Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or formulations, ingredients, skin health questions, if you heard something, read something, somebody told you something about health or nutrition, you want clarification, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products, you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please head over to my website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got blog posts and news stories and all the longevity products as well. You can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the phone team, the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. If you want to start a business, if you're entrepreneurially minded, if you're a business person and you want to start a business but you don't want to invest a lot of money in an infrastructure and inventory, we do it for you for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a business. Call 866-735-2470. They can tell you all about it. 866-735-2470. All right, welcome back to The Bright Side, friends. Last we spoke, we were talking about the matrix, more technically the extracellular matrix, the outside the cell matrix. This is the stuff that's the bread in our raisin bread model. Where I was saying the body is constructed like raisin bread. The cells are the raisins, and the bread is the matrix. The matrix is the bread. The bread is the matrix. We've always said all disease is cell disease. This is the common feature of all 12,000 plus disease classifications. According to the World Health Organization, we've got 12,430 something disease classifications, but they all involve sick cells. All diseases are about sick cells. All disease is cell disease. But prior to the breakdown of the cell, prior to the sickness of the cell, which is like a little chemical factory of which there's hundreds of different types. You've got over 200 different types of cells and they're all producing different things and they're all moving in different ways and they all have different functions and different roles to play. The cells are the livingness of the body. All disease is cell disease. But prior to cell disease, you have a breakdown in the matrix. A breakdown in the extracellular matrix always precedes cell disease. The matrix becomes clogged. And because the matrix, which means mother in Latin, the matrix is the source of food, it's the source of oxygen, it's the source of electrical energy for the cell, the matrix detoxifies the cell. Once that matrix becomes clogged, cells will inevitably become sick. Even worse, over the course of time, as the, uh, uh, as the effects of the clogged up matrix accrue, not only will the cells become sick, the cells will become dead. The cells will die, ultimately. And how is it that the matrix becomes clogged? From dirty blood. How is it that the blood becomes dirty? From what we ingest. 
for the most part. Now, cigarette smoke can definitely have an impact on clogging up the blood and polluting the matrix. Uh, other respired toxins, mold and fungus, they may have an effect as well. Certainly, if you're injecting something through the skin, vaccines or IV drugs, that could always have an effect. But for the most part, dirty blood is a digestive and a food issue. This is why no matter what kind of health challenge you come to me with, I'm always going to say, do a food diet, first do a fast or a swear of cleanse, then do a food diary and elimination diet. This is always the first step in chronic diseases. And the more complicated your health challenge is, the more critical it is to simplify by working backwards to the digestive tract and to food and to the elimination diet and to the food diary, to your food diary and to uh, the swear of cleanse or a fast. So what we have here is ingestion of something either through the skin or through the nose or for the most part through the mouth results in dirty blood, which results in damaged or clogged matrix, which results in sick and dying cells. And then we get into a vicious cycle because the dying cells spew out their, contact, uh, their contents into the matrix. And this further clogs the matrix, further disrupts the matrix, further suffocates and starves and toxes out the cells, further kills the cells, further increases the dumping out of toxins into the matrix, polluting the matrix even more, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That, thus you have the vicious cycle of chronic degenerative disease. That's why it's degenerative. It keeps getting worse. That's what degenerative means. That's what progressive means. And this is 80% of our healthcare costs, which is in the trillions of dollars. It's all about this degenerative vicious cycle that, that accrues as the matrix, as the blood becomes dirty, the matrix becomes clogged and the cells die. Now, eventually, this damaged matrix is going to initiate repair mechanisms. The body is a self-repairing system. This is one of the most amazing features of the human body is it repairs itself. So over the course of time, as this extracellular matrix becomes damaged, the self-repair mechanism is going to kick in. And how is it that the body attempts to repair the matrix? With fiber, with protein fibers, and with plaques. And if you hear the word fibrosis in the name of your disease, like cystic fibrosis or pulmonary fibrosis or liver fibrosis, or if you've been diagnosed with fibrocystic breasts or uterine fibroids, fibroids, or if your doctor uses the word plaques to describe the condition of your health challenge, if he says something like amyloid plaques, as in, as in uh, the case of uh, Alzheimer's disease, or he says cardiac plaques in the heart, or plaques on top of the skin in the case of psoriasis, again, you are experiencing the end result of this damage repair mechanism. Can you see how what we call disease is not really even disease? It's repair. It's uh, the body's attempt to fix something. Now, if you go to the doctor, he's going to shut down the repair mechanism. This is, the, this is the, the idiocy of the medical model. It will shut down the body's attempt to repair things, allowing the damage to progress. What we really should be figuring out is what is causing the damage in the first place. If you have stenosis, spinal stenosis, mitral valve stenosis, pulmonary stenosis, same thing. You're dealing with a body's attempt to repair something. Likewise, sclerosis, if you have multiple sclerosis, amyotropic lateral sclerosis, that's Lou Gehrig's disease. If you have systemic sclerosis, that's where everything just becomes hardened. Sclerosis means hardening, which is, comes from the fibers. If you have lichen sclerosis, which is a, a hideous condition where the genitals become uh, hardened, sclerotic. If you have a connective tissue disease like scleroderma or lupus or Ehlers-Danlos syndrome or rheumatoid arthritis, all of these seemingly different diseases that require different specialists and different protocols and different coding into the insurance company's computer, they're all based in the same physiologic phenomena. And we don't need to know the diagnosis if we want to get better. Only a specialist cares about specialist di special diagnosis because that's how he gets paid. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We will return right after this. Don't go away. All right, we're back. 
Mexico on the Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for being here, friends. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Also, benfuchsarchives.com. Of course, you can purchase Longevity products off of our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off our websites, or you can call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. If you want to check out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel, if you're dealing with an- aging skin, if you want to anti-age your skin or acne blemishes or dark spots, Retinol is the absolute finest anti-pigmentation topical ingredient, topical active ingredient you could ever use. Way better than hydroquinone. Hydroquinone is typically what you'll get from a dermatologist for pigmentation issues. Hydroquinone is way toxic. I used to wear a mask when I had to make hydroquinone products. Hydroquinone is unstable. Hydroquinone known as irritating. Retinol has none of those problems associated with it. Retinol is a nutritional substance and it works way better than hydroquinone for uh, for dark spots if you're dealing with hyperpigmentation. Now keep in mind, hyperpigmentation, dark spots are a hormonal condition and they involve the internal milieu, as all skin problems do, they involve the internal milieu of the body. So you can't permanently uh, eliminate the condition, but you can eliminate the dark spots. In other words, you may eliminate the topical appearance of the dark spots, but you still gotta take care of your cortisol and your estrogen, your stress hormones, and make sure you're using your Mighty 90 essential nutrients if you are are hyperpigmenting. Nonetheless, you can use retinol topically and get some tremendous anti-pigmentation benefits if you're dealing with uh, so-called melasma or hyperpigmentation. You can find out all about our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so it's all about fibrosis, folks. If you're dealing with a chronic long-term degenerative health challenge, you are dealing with a fibrotic health challenge, and it doesn't matter what the name of the disease is. All of these seemingly different diseases that we have, whether it's Ehlers-Danlos syndrome or scleroderma or, or cardiovascular disease, all of these seemingly different, uh, uh, different diagnoses are based in the same physiologic phenomenon. Once we get this, once we understand this, we will have no need for doctors except for to doctor, which means to educate. That's what doctor's supposed to mean to educate. Yes, we'll always have a need for educators, and that's the job of a physician. Physicians should be trained in medicine and should educate us, not drug us, not surgically cut us apart, not remove organs. If you have a fibrotic condition that is preceding your degenerative disease, there is not a single thing your doctor can do about it, not a single drug that will help, not a single surgical procedure that will make a wit's bit of difference. And if you try to get relief from the medical model for your fibrotic condition, you have swallowed the Kool-Aid. If you think Obamacare or health insurance is going to make a wit's bit of difference to reverse your health challenge, you have swallowed the Kool-Aid. You have bought the lie and you're wasting your time and you're wasting your money and even worse, the useless and impotent medical model. While it can't help your condition, it can make it worse. That's what surgical procedures do. They make you worse. If you had your gallbladder removed, if you're having, if somebody's trying to talk you into having your uterus, uterus removed, the rest of your life you are going to be suffering from the impact. And if you're taking a prescription drug, while there's nothing a prescription drug can do for for fibrosis, it can certainly make things worse. Drugs are poisons, drugs are toxins, and it is just boggles the mind how any medical professional can think that we can be better off by taking a poison or by taking a pharmaceutical. There is not a single thing your doctor can do to improve a fibrotic condition, period. And by the way, even cancer is a fibrotic condition. Number one, because cancer always follows starvation and suffocation of cells. That's what causes the problem in the first place. And number two, fibrosis actually represents the body's attempt to prevent metastases, to prevent the spread of cancer cells. Reading from the Journal of Clinical and Translational Medicine, July 2014, quote, fibrosis is a disease, which it is not a disease, but they call it a disease. Quote, fibrosis is a disease that results in loss of organ function, contributes 
to a significant number of deaths worldwide and sustained fibrotic activation has been suggested to increase the risk of developing cancer in a variety of tissues, unquote. From the journal Clinical Cancer Research, also July 2014, quote, pathologic organ fibrosis is a condition that can affect all major tissues and is typically ascribed to the excessive accumulation of extracellular matrix components, particularly collagen. It typically leads to, uh, typically leads to compromise or of organ function and subsequent organ failure, and it is estimated that 45% of deaths in the developed world are linked to fibrosis. Fibrosis and cancer are known to be inextricably linked, unquote. That's the Journal of Clinical Cancer Research. Interestingly, there's actually evidence that the body can convert non-fiber making cells. Remember the fiber making cells, those are called the fibroblasts. Well, as it turns out, the body can actually convert non-fiber making cells, like skin cells, into fiber making cells. It will actually recruit non-fiber making cells and turn them into fiber making cells. This is how amazing the body is. This is how amazingly intelligent and self-repairing uh, the body is. If there is chronic wound and the body has to make fibers in order to protect itself from this chronic wounding, it will actually recruit non-fiber making cells to make fibers. It will turn non-fiber making cells into fiber making cells to protect uh, against cancer, to protect against the spread of cancer. In any case, wherever the fibers arise from, whether it's a protective mechanism, whether it's a cause of cancer, whether it's a protection from cancer, the fact is that tumor environments are notoriously fibrotic. And this fibrosis is always the end result of some kind of repair mechanism. And the take home message here, folks, is if you are dealing with a chronic long-term degenerative illness, you by definition are literally dealing with fibrosis, whether it's in the name of the disease or not. If you are dealing with any chronic long-term degenerative illness, you're dealing with fibrosis. In order to get, to get better, you don't have to know the name of the illness. You can ignore your diagnosis. You can ignore the name. You can simply focus on the matrix, work on the matrix, clean the matrix, use nutrients that help repair the matrix. How do you work on the matrix? How do you clean the matrix? It's everything we talk about on this program every single day. You work on your digestive system. You patch up the gut. You eliminate problem foods. You use nutrients that support the health of the digestive tract, including probiotics, including digestive enzymes, including your Fucoid Z from Longevity, which helps repair connective tissue and has antifibrotic benefits. You use vitamin C, which is the quintessential antifibrosis nutrient. You use vitamin E and coenzyme Q10. You make sure you're using your essential fatty acids and your mighty 90 essential nutrients and take nutrients that help the body build a healthy matrix. Gelatin is amazing for helping the body build a healthy matrix. Hyaluronic acid is also important. All the polysaccharides and proteoglycans that come from cartilage and bone broth protein. This is for all diseases, folks. This is for all health challenges, long-term progressive health challenges, because they all involve this dysfunctional, this broken down, this pathological extracellular matrix. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We will return with your phone calls right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. Friends, we've got uh, a bunch of calls here and a couple lines open at 844-236-6010. We'll get to you in just a second. We're talking fibrosis and, uh, and the extracellular matrix and its impact on the disease state, particularly in the case of cancer. I'm reading from the journal OncoTarget, published earlier, or last month, I guess it's already February now, published last month, researchers at Georgia State University and Stony Brook University have identified the tumor suppressant role of something called MMP9. What is MMP9, you say? It's an enzyme. It's so-called proteinase enzyme. Technically, it's a matrix proteinase enzyme or a matrix metallo proteinase enzyme. That's the technical name for it. Basically, it breaks up fibers. How do you like that? You take enzymes that break up fibers, 
and it suppresses tumors. That's according to uh, researchers from Georgia State University for chronic inflammation, ulcerative colitis, colorectal cancer. All of these conditions which have, uh, involve fibrosis can be uh, improved, at least according to researchers at Georgia State University and Stony Brook University, by using metalloproteinase enzymes. Enzymes are very, very interesting substances. And reading again uh, from the disease, uh, journal Disease Model Mechanisms, MMP enzymes uh, are antifibrotic. MMP enzymes modulate a wide range of biological processes, especially related to immunity, tissue repair and remodeling, and cancer. If you've ever wondered why Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez successfully treated cancers with pancreatic enzymes, now you have your answer. Pancreatic enzymes are tremendously antifibrotic. And this is why enzymes have been used to treat not just, can not just cancer, but also to treat all fibrotic conditions. And that's why I always say if you're going pre-surgery, if you're going into surgery or post-surgery, you'd be smart to use your ultimate enzymes for a couple of weeks before you go into surgery and a couple of weeks after surgery. After a surgical procedure, fibrosis is very likely. In fact, 95, almost 95% of people who have, have, have abdominal surgeries have issues with fibrosis. They call them adhesions, abdominal adhesions. This is the, the uh, a secret that no surgeon wants you to know. If you're going in to have your gallbladder removed, you are very likely going to end up with fibrosis of the abdomen. Fibro and that can cause all kinds of health havoc. That's why you want to do uh, your digestive enzymes, your ultimate enzymes, pre-surgery and post-surgery. Ultimate enzymes from longevity are very much antifibrotic. Here's another really cool one. I found this really interesting. This is from the journal Rheumatology. Cannabinoids inhibit fibrogenesis in diffuse systemic sclerosis fibroblasts. Basically, cannabinoids, marijuana. The active ingredient in marijuana is antifibrotic. Quote, reading from uh, the Journal of Rheumatology, it has been demonstrated that the endocannabinoid, that's our natural cannabinoids, the endocannabinoid system is upregulated in fibrosis and modulation of the cannabinoid receptors might limit the progression of uncontrolled fibrogenesis. Every day, almost, almost every day, we're learning about the health benefits of the cannabinoids, the illegal cannabinoids, although they're becoming less illegal as time goes on. How dare the government tell you what you can do for your health if you want to use cannabinoids for your health? You know, you go to jail for that, the, uh, except for, I think, nine or ten states. Anyway, 844-236-6010 is our number. Uh, time to hit the phones. Let's go to Rose in Virginia. Where you been, Rosie? I'm doing well, thank you. God bless. I always hear you, and I enjoy you know. And you know how much we we care. We appreciate you all the effort you do. Thank you, Rose. What's um, going on today? What's going on today? How can we help? Okay, I have a question for you, educators, because I'm trying to help others, including corporations. You know, bring awareness. You know, canola oil in general is man-made. Yes, and it's there a. Is, um, in my opinion, it's an evil oil, it's, you know. And there are corporations that are supposed to be uh, supporting the health approach, but they're including in, in their products that they sell and their prepared food. The cooks, I guess, based on lack of knowledge. It's cheap, too. Canola oil is... amounts of canola. Canola oil is... Canola oil is cheap. It's a, it's a nasty oil. I would stay away from canola oil. Mostly, be, first of all, it's most uh, uh, the rapeseed plant that they get canola oil, which stands for, I think, Canadian. What does it stand for? It's something Canadian, canola oil. I forgot what it stands for. But it, it's a Canadian oil. It's a genetically modified oil. It's a nasty oil for a lot of reasons. But the most important reason why canola oil is a problem, the way I look at it, is because it's very unstable. And when you cook with an unstable oil, you create carcinogenic compounds. This is why Dr. Wallach says not to use any oils. I don't go that far. Um, I think there is some benefit to using certain oils, but you'd want to be very, very careful with oils, uh, and canola oil in particular because it is an omega-6 rich oil uh, is very problematic. Then there's the whole GMO issue. The, the, the genetic modification allows farmers, or not really farmers, but agricultural, big agricultural companies to... Uh, 
uh, big agricultural companies to use more pesticides on the oil, and canola oil tends to have a lot of pesticides on it. Uh, it's really nasty stuff. I would stay away from canola oil. Per personally, if you're reading the ingredient deck on a food, a processed food, which, which we should all should be doing, by the way, we should all be reading uh, uh, ingredient decks, um, you want to stay away from canola oil if you see it. Now, canola oil is not necessarily as bad or as unstable, I should say, as some other uh, omega-6 oils. It's monounsaturated like olive oil is. But it's not polyunsaturated. And poly just means many. Mono means one. Unsaturated is the unstable part of an oil. Uh, polyunsaturated oils like grapeseed oil and peanut oil uh, and, and corn oil, those are, the, are, are bigger problems as far as instability goes. But the whole genetic modification thing, I, I, I would stay away from. There's no, really, there's no need to use canola oil. There's much better options. I hope I helped. Uh, did you, anything else? Yeah, my, my question is, I saw in this particular corporation, I don't want to mention because I, I use great wisdom, um, that they have once uh, a canola oil that said organic. I said, well, I don't, you know, I, I, I was outraged when I saw that. It's still a genetically... It's still genetically modified, and I would stay away from it. There's, there's no need for canola oil. There's no, except it is cheap, I will say that, but there's no real need for it. Rosie, I'm going to motivate. I've got a Thank bunch you. of calls I want to get to. God Thank bless you. Sir. Say hi to God Steve for me. You. Take Blessings. care. I will. You, you as well. Okay. Hey, Becky in Maryland, thanks for holding for so long. What's going on? Uh, Becky, do we have Becky? Becky in Maryland? Oh, yes. I'm hey, Becky. Up. Hey, good morning. What's up? Hello. Um, so I am calling because I just wanted to get some help. I was referred to you by a family member, and I listened to your presentations on YouTube, and I got so excited. I just want to use all the products and do everything, nice. but my wallet does not support that. Okay. So I'm trying to get a feel for what's the best way to start. So what do you need? What do you need? I what's have, going on? Um, uh, high blood pressure okay. and acne. I've been on lisinopril 10 milligrams for um, a while, up until about six months ago. And then um, my weight increased, and I went to the doctor because my blood pressure started spiking. They put yeah. me on a gram. And so I'm saying they I put you on what? They, not that I'm, uh, I'm saying what to do. Hang on, Becky. How to start. Hang on, sweetheart. I'm going to totally help you. I'm going to change your life today. And you can have, you could be a new woman in a week. But let, what was the second drug you said? What was that second uh, it's drug? It's just a one. Lysinopril. It went from 10 uh, okay. milligrams to 20 milligrams. Got it. Okay. Becky, we're going to change your life, okay? If you do everything I tell you, you're going to completely eliminate your high blood pressure problem and your skin will get better and you'll lose weight as well. So hang on. Don't go away. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and we're talking to Becky in Maryland. Becky, are you there, ma'am? I'm here. Okay, so you got a pen? Because I'm going to give you a bunch of good stuff, and you're going to drop that blood pressure, and you're going to lose weight, and your skin's going to get better all at the same time. You ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, first and foremost, uh, you want to regard high blood pressure as a sign that the body is in distress. Now, certainly you can have kidney issues and then other uh, uh, cardiovascular issues, etc., that can affect the blood pressure. But the first thing you want to think of is a body in distress, and you can prove this by your, uh, for yourself by sitting in a hot bath. All right. If you go take a hot bath right now, your blood pressure will drop much faster than any antihypertensive can do with no toxicity. You follow me, ma'am? Just yes, sitting in a hot bath will do it. Now, I recommend two hot baths a day. Your blood pressure is going to drop so significantly that you want to tell your doctor because you may need to lower your dose. Ultimately, we want to get you to eliminate your dose of the lisinopril, which, by the way, affects the kidneys, and it, it's, a way of, uh, uh, it, it's a way of changing the fluidity of the blood to drop the pressure. Uh, so hot baths or hot showers also will work for you. That's the first thing. The second thing you want to do, it sounds like you've got some sugar issues. This is the second major reason why uh, blood pressure goes up. Hypertension and blood sugar problems go hand in hand, whether or not you've been diagnosed as a diabetic. So get on a diabetic diet. I don't care if they told you your blood, is, blood sugar is fine, whatever. Just assume that you're a diabetic or pre-diabetic or got messed up blood sugar. More protein, less carbs, sweets, soda, soda pop, and fruit juice and fruits and desserts, etc. Uh, and more fat. You might want to explore the ketogenic diet, which is a high-fat, low-calorie 
low-calorie diet. And we've talked about that in the past. You can go to brightsideben.com and search ketogenic diet if you want more information. So the right. first, two, first two things is relax the body with hot water. Also, massage can do it. Anything you do to relax your musculoskeletal system, uh, massage or deep breathing or Reiki or meditation or yoga, in addition to the hot baths. Uh, a slow, deep breathing is another great way to quickly lower your blood pressure. Sit on the couch uh, and twice a day or three times a day, spend five minutes slow, deep breathing. Slow is very important. In through the no uh, Always breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. And the exhalation is where the blood pressure drops. So you maybe five seconds inhale, ten, uh, seven to ten seconds exhale. You always want to exhale a little bit more than you inhale. Those are two strategies that will immediately drop your blood pressure. And then uh, uh, the, the whole blood sugar issue will also help uh, reducing your blood sugar. If you have any digestive issue, health issues, very likely you're constipated. Look for foods that are associated with constipation, gas, bloating, um, uh, any digestive discomfort, and then eliminate those foods, and at the same time, start to patch up the digestive tract with uh, the ultimate nightly essence from longevity, with uh, ultimate enzymes from longevity, apple cider vinegar with all of your meals. If you could fast for uh, once a week, intermittent fasting, do once a week or once every 10 days, that will also help you. Then there's a whole slew of supplements that will help you handle your blood sugar, that will drop your blood pressure and improve your skin. And I'm going to give you a bunch right now. So uh, I, I'm going to go fast. I apologize for it. But you can always review the program at BenFuchsArchives.com or BrightSideBen.com. Uh, ultimate Niacin from Longevity. One a day. The Healthy Start Pack, and that includes the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, the Ultimate, uh, the uh, Ultimate EFAs, and the uh, the uh, Osteo F Beyond Osteo FX, and then the Fucoid Z from Longevity. Make sure you're using a thousand milligrams a day of magnesium, or even more. In addition to uh, the Beyond Osteo FX, which will get you a little magnesium, you want to throw in another thousand milligrams, or even more, maybe fifteen hundred milligrams a day of magnesium glycinate. That's my favorite form of magnesium. You'd also be well advised to start using some blood sugar nutrients like zinc picolinate, second word P-I-C-O-L-I-N-A-T-E, 50 milligrams a day, as well as the Sweeties from Longevity, which is chromium and vanadium. If you want to use some good foods that will help lower the blood pressure, look for fatty foods, particularly olives, avocados, and fatty fish. Fatty fish has omega-3 fatty acids in it, which are wonderfully uh, antihypertensive naturally antihypertensive and then if you want to add in a couple of the uh, you're going to get a lot of B vitamins in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine but if you want to add a couple more in in addition to the ultimate niacin you might want to throw in 100 to 200 milligrams of thiamine and then get yourself on a good vitamin B12 supplement although uh, I like the intramuscular shots that you get the vitamin B12 shots that can have a wonderful effect on blood pressure Last but not least, if you want to try our Blemish Repair Complex, you'll get a whole bunch of good skin health nutrients. You can go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Uh, lastly, Becky, if you do everything I just said, you can be a new woman in less than 30 days, and you can definitely notice significant differences in a week. And I'd love to hear back from you. If you, if you follow the protocol, I'd love to hear back from you to hear how you're doing, okay? Understood. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you. All right, uh, Jim in Ohio, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, Ben. How you doing? I'm doing good. What's going on? Well, too much is going on. I've okay. got uh, blood clot. Uh, I had blood okay. clots in my legs and okay. my lungs. Okay. okay. All right. The, um, but man, I've got right now, I've got cellulitis, and I've got a leg that's constantly is weeping. You've got messed up blood sugar, guaranteed. Are you, have, you been di have you been diagnosed as such? No. Okay, well, you could guarantee you've got messed up blood sugar. It's not unusual, so it's almost impossible to have that kind of complex of symptoms without having messed up blood sugar. So you've got to treat yourself like a diabetic. I'm guessing you're in your 50s or 60s. Is that right? Well, it's a pretty good guess, but how about my 70s? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so you're doing great. Yeah. Don't, don't even worry about it. it. Sounds like your body's in distress. Blood clots are a sign that the body is freaking out. And, and when you think about it, this is how the mechanism, mechanism works. Under conditions of uh, stress, the body thinks it's about to be eaten by a tiger. That's what stress is to the body. It's not credit card bill stress. It's not sugar stress. The body doesn't know any of these. These are modern stresses. From an evolutionary perspective, the main stress was being eaten. So the blood will clot whenever stress hormones go up. So, and that's what the blood clots are. We've got to 
figure out why is your body under duress and the most likely suspect, especially considering it's the lower extremities, is going to be blood sugar. So treat yourself like a diabetic, as we, we were talking to the last caller. Use the sweeties from Longevity. Go on a ketogenic diet or at least a low-calorie and low-sugar diet. I like the ketogenic diet, but at least low-calorie and low-sugar. You may want to start off everything by doing a swear OV cleanse and then go into your uh, low-sugar diet. If you have digestive health issues, you need to address those as well. Slow, deep breathing can be wonderful for folks dealing with blood clots. It helps improve the circulation. Same with a little rebounder, a mini trampoline. And if you don't want to spend money on it's only about 60 or 70 bucks, but if you don't want to spend money on a mini trampoline, just jog in place in front of the... I've got that, Ben. My... my Big question is now they got me on warfarin. Okay, it's awful. Uh, wait, wait, you just want to depress me here? That's one of the most <laughs> awful drugs there is. So, okay, well, I, that's this is my thing. They say you got to be on this for the rest of your life. So, well, I'm telling you how you're going to get off me. of it. I'm telling you how you're going to get off of it. Just listen okay. to everything I just said to you. Just everything I just said to you. Uh, get on the ultimate niacin right away, 500 milligrams a day. Make sure you're using enough omega-3 fats. They're wonderfully blood thinning. Get on the healthy start pack. Uh, and it, I think I told you about deep breathing, oxygenation. Is very important for uh, oxygenation is very important for helping thin the blood, and then stay away from anything that toxins out the circulatory system, including in addition to sugar, uh, any dig uh, foods that trigger digestive problems. Basically, here's the thing: I could give you a whole list of stuff, but I want you to understand what's happening here. What's happening is your body is responding to some kind of duress. That du certainly psychological issues, emotional, mental kinds of things that can cause a problem. But the main du uh, main duress that is going to induce blood clots and problems with the circulation are going to be digestive and that includes sugar and food toxins. Treat yourself like a diabetic and make sure you're using uh, a digestive health strategies. Ultimate enzymes, by the way, can also help you and then make sure you're moving the body. Make sure you're imp uh, moving the muscular system so the circulation moves. As the circulation moves, the blood clotting will naturally diminish. So improving circulation, removing Removing any stressors from the body, and then, of course, mental and emotional strategies will help you as well. This is not difficult, and any boneheaded medical professional that tells you you're going to be on warfarin for the rest of your life needs to listen to the bright side. Even better, okay. get your doctor to call me. We'll do a three-way call, and I'll explain to your doctor how the body works and why your blood is clotting, and we can all be better off for it, all right? I'm just that kidding. Sounds he's good he's to never going okay. to do it. <laughs> He'll never do it, but if he wants to, send an uh, email to ben at ksco.com and tell your doctor we want to do a three-way phone call, and I'll teach him how the body works. All okay. right, I'm, just, I'm just playing with you there, Jim, because I don't think that's going to happen. But, hey, but... Well, it's a young female doctor, so I don't think she's going to listen, but hey. Uh, well, <laughs> anyway, if you can help right. me, Ben, I'll follow your instructions and see if we can get off this warfarin. And, Thank uh, you so much, hey, Jim. Be... All right, sir. Have a Got to go, buddy. Thank you, man. All right, I'm so sorry if I left you on hold. Uh, that's just the way it is on the bright side. Thank you so much for listening, friends. Please check out my Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com a retinol 5% gel, truth serum, truth omega-6 healing cream, and our truth balm, all vitamin C rich, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, wax, water, oil, silicon, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.